Every year, thousands of youth are put on juvenile probation, more than half for low-level offenses, like shoplifting or acting out in school. Kids are being hauled into court for behavior that used to simply get them referred to their parents or principal, and this happens disproportionately to kids of color. Being on probation comes with curfews, restrictions on where you can go, orders on who you can hang out with, and rules that are so convoluted and hard for anyone to follow without a slip up, especially for teens whose brains are still developing. Once a kid messes up, like missing curfew a few times, he's violated probation. This often results in a young person removed from their families, locked up in a juvenile facility, their education is disrupted, their job is lost. They often end up worse off than if the system hadn't gotten involved in the first place. Kids should still be held accountable, but in ways that help them grow up and mature. Kids need support, not court dates and criminal records for normal teenage behavior. We know what works with young people. There are effective ways to promote personal growth and positive behavior change in youth. The Annie E. Casey Foundation has developed a vision for transforming juvenile probation based on human development and intervention strategies that have been shown to reduce delinquency and from real world pilots in cities and counties across the country. It's all about setting young people up for success as adults. We can start by diverting young people with nonviolent, low level charges from juvenile court altogether and towards community organizations, human service agencies, and their own families. Probation officers could then focus their time on youth who do pose a significant risk for serious offending. Second, we should emphasize incentives, not sanctions. For generations, juvenile probation has been built around punishment. But research makes clear this approach is totally backwards. Incentives as small as movie tickets can motivate young people to do positive things, like succeed in school and remain drug-free. Third, we must commit to racial and ethnic equity. While only 40% of the country's youth population are youth of color, they are overrepresented on probation caseloads and diverted less frequently than their white peers. And youth of color represent 68% of youth held in residential custody for a technical violation. That's being locked up for breaking rules, not breaking the law. Finally, we should build young people's skills, decision-making, and positive connections. Those are the real game changers. We know what to do. Now it's time to get probation right.